Hey, welcome back to another episode of Church On Demand. We are so excited that you have chosen to join us wherever you're at, in your home, in, in at the gym, in your car, wherever you're at. We're so thankful that you are taking time out of your day to participate and worship with us. So we're gonna hop into a time of worship, so join us there.
captive set free There's no sound louder than a captive set free There's no sound louder than a captive set free And there's no sound louder than a captive set free Welcome again, church family, to Church on Demand. Um, I'm coming to you with another message today from the series Family Matters. Uh, what a week this has been. Uh, we just kicked off our house parties this week. We had about seven houses open up this week with families coming in and sharing a meal, sharing communion, praying together, encouraging one another in the Lord. And uh, I can't wait to hear the praise reports that come out of these house parties. Uh, if you haven't signed up, please do. Um, on that website, hermsonassembly.com, you'll find seven choices to choose from, as well as the document, the template for the house parties themselves. That'll give you an idea of what we're doing. And uh, again, as we make this shift, as we come together, Roman, uh, Hebrews 10 tells us that we do this, coming together to stir each other up in love and good works. And so um, I pray that you who have participated so far uh, have really enjoyed yourself already. So today as we get into the series called Family Matters, um, last Sunday, if you recall, I spoke about slaves over sons, how that we are no longer a slave to sin. Our debts have been paid, we've been forgiven, and we have inherited the kingdom of God. And so today I'm talking about the kingdom. Uh, today's word we're entitling, We Are Royal. We Are Royal. And so as we look to the word today, I'm looking at uh, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. And you're probably going to hear me use this scripture quite often in the future as well as we talk about what does it mean to be kings? What does it mean to be priests in this kingdom of God uh, that's in, that we live in? And so in 1 Peter chapter, nine, chapter 2, verse 9, it says, But you are God's chosen treasure. It literally means guarded possession priests who are kings, or you could say a kingdom of priests, a spiritual nation set apart as God's devoted ones. He called you out of darkness to experience his marvelous light, and now he claims you as his very own. He did this so that you would broadcast his glorious wonders throughout the world. For at one time you were not God's people, but now you are. At one time, you knew nothing about God's mercy because you had not received it yet, but now you are drenched in it. And so as we look at this passage today, we're going to begin talking about the area of identity. Last week, our identity we discover is that we are sons and daughters. We have full access. We have full inheritance. Everything that Jesus died for and rose again for is now uh, accessible. We've been given to. We've been given eternal life as a gift, but we've also give, been given abundant life, um, as the word says, to rule as kings and queen, kings and priests in our home uh, and in our walk with God. You know, as I look back at the Old Testament, this is not the first time that God talked about priests. Um, Peter is. All, I would almost say he's reiterating what God spoke to Moses thousands of years earlier uh, regarding the priesthood, regarding kingship. When Moses was in the desert, God spoke to him these words. He says in Exodus chapter 19, verses five and six, God said to Moses, now therefore, 
if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, then you shall be a special treasure. We just read that in 1 Peter 2, 9, chosen treasure. He says special treasure to me, talking about God, above all people, for all the earth is mine, and you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which you shall speak to the children of Israel. God was trying to highlight the fact that when they came out of the when they came out of Egypt into freedom, in, out of slavery into sonship, he in essence was saying, I have brought you out to be kings and priests in my nation. Peter, of course, reiterate, reiterates it in chapter two, verse nine. And so when we come to understand what does it mean to be a king, what does it mean to be a priest, and I'm gonna focus on priesthood today. To be kings, it means that God, we represent God to man with authority, governance. We are, we are in essence mediating God's covenant with man uh, through the preaching of the gospel, preaching of the kingdom. And then when it comes to priests, we represent man to God. In other words, through prayer, intercession, uh, taking our family to a place of God's presence. And all of these things that I'm sharing with you today is what you are to be experiencing as part of the family of God. You're a son, you're a daughter, which carries inheritance, which carries provision, but it also comes with, resp with responsibility. We are kings and priests. And so this describes believers in God's kingdom. Uh, Jesus throughout his earthly ministry, you can read it over and over again. John said it first, Jesus then said it again. Repent for the kingdom of God is near. And we see here that God's kingdom is really what God is after. Um, it began in the Garden of Eden. Uh, he is here to, through Jesus to restore that kingdom back on earth. Right now, he's establishing that kingdom in us through believers. And he will ultimately establish the kingdom on earth when he comes again. And so he's wanting to establish his kingdom in your life, in your home, like the prayer, the Lord's Prayer that we, that we often say, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In other words, your kingship, your lordship, um, we're acknowledging Jesus as king. The word says that he is king of kings and lord of lords. And everything that Jesus does as a king, he now has extended that same authority, that same, those same benefits, those same privileges, those same responsibilities to us. Uh, when he stood before Pontius Pilate and he was being, uh, he was being questioned and judged and while the audience and the crowds were saying, crucify him, crucify him, Pilate, uh, says, Pilate said to, to Jesus, um, said to him, are you a king? And Jesus answered, you say rightly that I am a king. For this cause I was born. And for this cause, I have come into the world that I should bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. And then Herod would go on to say, well, then what is truth? And the truth that Jesus was bringing in front of Pontius Pilate and all that and, and, and all those governing authorities was that, that he was a king of a kingdom and that he was establishing his kingdom. The Israelites up to that point, if you recall the week before he was crucified, the, the Israelites wanted Jesus to overthrow the Roman kingdom, the Roman rule, but Jesus was not here to do that. He was here to establish his own kingdom based on his crucifixion, based on his death, burial, resurrection. He was here to reestablish God's kingdom in our hearts, not just in rule, but rather in our hearts. And so what is a kingdom? Simply put, a kingdom is the government of a king. A kingdom is the sovereign rulership and governing influence of a king over his territory, impacting it with his will, his intent, his purpose, manifesting a culture and society reflecting the king's nature, values, and morals. A kingdom is the governing impact of a king's will over a territory or dominion, he, his influence over a people and a government led by the king. 
Therefore, the very heart of any kingdom is its king. The very heart of the kingdom of heaven is Jesus. It's perfectly illustrated in the fact that what makes heaven heaven is God. God is ruler of the heaven and the of the heavens and the earth. There is no part of his creation. You know, I, I on on Instagram, I I subscribe to some of the um, like NASA or uh, some of the pages that show the the solar systems being taken by you know pictures by by the Hubble telescope or other telescopes and and I'm always amazed at the gravity and the and the grandness of the universe and the millions if not billions of galaxies out there and realizing that God owns it all he's ruler of it all there is no corner of the universe no corner of space no cor no no part of creation that does not have his presence in it, that he is not part of it. And that same presence of God, he wants to bring to earth. He wants to bring to us. How did he do it? In the fullness of time, Galatians 4, 4, Jesus came and died and rose again. And he came to earth to reestablish the kingdom of God. Uh, because only a king can establish a kingdom this act alone reveals that Jesus Christ is the King. When he comes again, we're gonna hail him as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. What he was telling in essence to, Herod, or to Pilate was that my kingdom is not of this world. My kingdom's from another place. Uh, he was clearly emphasizing that he was a king and that he was speaking of the kingdom of heaven. Uh, Jesus uh, said that his kingdom was not of or from this world, but he never said it was not in this world. His kingdom on earth originates in heaven and we have heaven in us, amen? And so I just wanna close with a few qualities of kingship um, when it comes to being a king. When, you, when we're born again, again, like I said, we become sons and daughters. We also be, which carries inheritance and blessing and the love of God and the presence of God. Uh, you know, we can rest in him but it also carries responsibilities. Some of the characteristics of a king are this. Um, we have inherited authority, we have inherit authority because we're born again into his kingdom. When you became born again, you, you inherently began to operate in the authority of Jesus Christ, the king. We were born into kingship. Uh, because the kingdom is ours by birth, it is for life. In other words, it's not here today, gone tomorrow, it, but rather we are born into his kingdom and it's for life and it's for eternity. Um, because, as a king, uh, a king's words are absolute. Jesus's word is absolute. And because it's absolute, we can rest in it with pure confidence or can I say god -fidence? God confidence or faith. We can rest in the word of God as kings in the kingdom. Um, his word will never, uh, his word does not and will never change. And so this very word that the Bible says, even if heaven and earth passes away, my words will never pass away. Um, this very word is the word that we will not only be judged by, that, but we will also rule and reign by as kings in the kingdom. Jesus owns it all. That's what the word Lord means, owner. He owns it all. He owns our hearts. We are, the word says, we've been bought with a price. We're not our own. And we have authority in his name. We reflect his character and his nature. Uh, when you think about it, when a king shows up, his full authority is present. The word says, when two or three gather in his name, he is in the midst of us, talking about King Jesus. And so when it comes to kingship, again, you were born into the kingdom as a king. Jesus is the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. God is the owner of it all, but he has bestowed on his son Jesus all power and authority. And that same power and authority he gave Jesus as King, he now has extended to you in your home. And so we're gonna dig into it as time goes on a little bit more, what that practically looks like for you and for me. But understand this, that as a believer and as a member of the family of God, but also for your house, your home, your children, your spouse, uh, whether you're single or married or uh, you know, 
or have kids or no kids, um, God has given you authority in the home as kings. I tell people when I perform their wedding, I say, whenever you say the words, I do, God says, I will. When you said yes to Jesus, God says, I give you authority. I, I will give you everything you need to rule and reign according to the word of God, to walk in my authority, to walk in my power, to walk in my presence, to, to be an extension of my kingdom. And so I wanna pray with you today that God would just begin to make that real in your home today, amen? Lord, I thank you for everybody watching this broadcast today, this Church on Demand. And I pray, Lord, that we, each one of us, would, rather than walking in shame and condemnation and fear, that we would begin to realize the authority that you have given us as kings in our home, dear God, as kings in our walk with you, as kings in, our, in your kingdom. Uh, Lord, every, when you told the disciples to go and heal the sick and raise the dead and, and, and bring deliverance, you told them to tell those that received a miracle, the kingdom of God has come near you. Lord, I pray today, dear God, that the kingdom of God would be realized in every home. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. Can't wait to see you again. What a great message we just heard. If the message has compelled you to want to make a decision to follow Jesus today, we encourage you to go to hermosonassembly.com salvation. Let us know about your new step of faith. We'd love to partner with you and celebrate with you. And perhaps this is your first time visiting us or even watching or listening to this stream. Head over to hermosonassembly.com connect and fill out our online connect card. We'd love to know you stop by and get you a gift. And finally, we thank you for your continued generosity in giving here at Hermiston Assembly. You can head over to hermistonassembly.com slash give if you wish to partner with us. Thank you for your support. It makes this ministry possible. And that wraps it up for another episode of Church on Demand. We'll see you next week.